Cam here, and today we're going over custom functions. What are they? How do we use them? What's that look like? So let's go ahead and hop into Xano, where we'll take a look at this reusable logic, where we'll be able to use them in API endpoints, other custom functions, tasks, triggers, where we'll create it once and be able to use it as many times as we'd like. Found in other programming languages, we're going to be organizing our code, essentially, and allowing us to troubleshoot and build with that much more ease preventing and avoiding monolithic code bases so that we can go ahead and develop faster. And we'll do so all with our visual developer inside Xano. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. So getting started within Xano on the left-hand side, we're going to select our library tab and we're going to select functions at the top. It's going to bring us to this page here where, well, this is our functions library. We can see a list of functions that would exist here if we have a list of functions. Otherwise, it's just one function at the moment, but we can add to this list by selecting this blue add function button. We can provide it a name, a description, a folder path for organization, and a tag for classification, and then request history. We'll go ahead and keep that uh, inheriting the workspace settings. But once we have that created, well, the next UI, this will be our actual function. It's very similar to, say, creating an API endpoint within Xano. We have our inputs, we have our function stack, and we have our response. The input here, we have our text. So we're going to be dealing with just a string at the moment. This example is dealing with string manipulation specifically, where what we'll be doing is we'll be, well, manipulating our input text. And for every input text that we pass into this function, what we're going to do is we're going to apply this to upper filter to that text. It's going to return that text or that text that's now uppercase and it's going to return it here to the bottom so what we want to do is be able to run this we want to be able to test this make sure that it actually works here i have in my input text just hey i'll go ahead and click run and we can see that then my output is hey with an exclamation mark so here even though this example is very simple what we're going to be able to do now from this is take this logic and put it in other areas of our application so that we don't have to recreate it anywhere else. It's going to go ahead and simplify our workflow, our development, and hopefully, well, make us a little faster. So let's go ahead and navigate to our API endpoints. I'm going to click on my API tab here. And we're going to be dealing specifically with that authentication. I want to deal with the signup. So we're in our signup endpoint here. And what I want to do is for every single name that is passed in. So anytime a user signs up, we're going to take that name and we're going to uppercase it and then save it to that user. The way that we're going to do this, and we can do this multiple ways, is by navigating on this precondition. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and click this blue plus sign. We can, of course, always add this function down to the bottom and drag it. But we'll just go ahead and more or less insert it here above that add record. We have this tab right up here for our recent custom functions. We can go ahead and click that and then we'll, of course, select it. Or we could even go ahead and type it in. So to upper. Either way, we'll go ahead and click it and bring it in to our function stack, where now it's asking for that input. What input is the input text? That here will be our name. We'll go ahead and pass in our name. And now we need to update our record here for our user. That output is going to come through as func1. That's what it's named. So for our name, we'll go ahead and replace that value with func1. Perfect. We'll go ahead and click done. And now we can publish this so that when we sign up, we go ahead and click run and then check the database for that user that we've created. We can see that that name has been uppercased. So this logic that we've created in our custom function library this to upper function can be used in various other areas of our application, starting with our signup. So in this case, we've taken our custom function and we've used it within our auth signup endpoint. Now, while it works here for that auth signup endpoint, we can of course always use this function anywhere else that we want to go ahead and uppercase our text. So whether it's in a task or whether it's in another custom function nested within, it doesn't matter. You have the ability to reuse this. Now, sometimes we are developing within our API endpoint, for example, and we're creating some logic within our function stack that actually could be reused in other areas of our backend. So what we've allowed our Xano users to do is if you navigate to the top right hand corner, you'll actually be able to convert to a function. Now, you can, of course, always clone first. A lot of our users prefer cloning first so that we can preserve that API endpoint if you still would like to. And then you can go ahead and convert it to a function and name it however or what you'd like. So now we'll see here we've converted it to a function. 
automatically with these inputs. It wants the name, the email, and the password so that when we pass it into this new custom function, which we can open up by clicking this blue text here, we can see inside here that this custom function contains all of the logic that that endpoint did. And it's going to work the same way. It's going to return that auth token here. And as that variable of func underscore one. So you can go ahead and reuse this logic anywhere else that you'd like. You can also hold shift to select specific functions inside of a function stack and click this convert to func option if you only want to include specific steps and not the entire thing. So functions, super versatile. You can go ahead and create them once and reuse them anywhere. Don't forget to go ahead and subscribe, turn on your notifications, leave a comment. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and reach out to us on our community or within your instant support. We'd love to be able to help and talk about how to build. Can't wait to see what you build with these custom functions. And until next time.